This is the human race. You have to keep running or you're disqualified. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Thanks for joining me for another episode of Bitcoin and Coffee. I'll be your host, Eugene Forrest. So what are we looking at today with these crazy cryptocurrency markets? Man, it's another day of red. Uh, it looks like yesterday, uh, those numbers continued to go downwards pretty much all day long. People are definitely freaking out more. Uh, you know, the FUD is getting worse. It looks like people are starting to question why they're in this cryptocurrency thing. I guess they're starting to say that we're getting ready to possibly go on a bear, another bear run. I mean, we could be looking at 8,000, 7,000 as the bottom. People are saying, I try not to buy into all of this, you know. Uh, I realize that when I'm buying Bitcoin, that pretty much what I'm doing is I am trying to buy a piece of digital frontier to get me to expand into a new world that I'm trying to hold because I think that holding a piece of this new frontier could help revolutionize my life. And I think that getting a hold of this new technology is going to be changing how everyone views money. And that's what the true value is behind it is, is that when people realize that the fiat dollar isn't quite right and they move over towards this digital cryptocurrency, which is better for the world all the way around, that the larger piece I can gain now while people are still trying to get adopted to it, the more it's going to be worth. But then everyone's saying, you know, the U.S. dollar, I could really care less what the U.S. dollar of Bitcoin is because by the time I want to be selling or giving away my Bitcoin for goods or services, I'm going to be giving them directly Bitcoin. I'm not going to be giving it to some third party for U.S. dollars to go pay, you know, my mortgage or my car payment or go buy groceries at the store. I'm going to be using, you know, my digital device to transfer directly Bitcoin from my wallet to their wallet. And until then, I'm just going to hodl it. And, you know, you say never invest more than you can, you know, handle or whatever. Yeah. I mean, if you're putting too much money into this and you're really stressed out about it, you really do need to cash out some of it. Um, I can't say about how many emails I've been getting lately about people being concerned about this price dip and the price dipping saying that they have bought in recently because a lot of the people that do write me emails are new to cryptocurrency. That's why they're trying to figure stuff out through my free help desk service. It's at Eugene Forrest at 20 at gmail.com. Um, if you are concerned, you do need to cash out some of your cryptocurrency. I mean, it, you need to not be stressed over it. You should not be losing sleep over the situation. This is a small part of one of your many investment options that you should be doing. You got to remember that your family comes first and everything else is only second. So, all right, let's see what we got as we're looking at the price. We got $364 billion for a market cap. I mean, that's down from the $400 billion. But hey, I mean, we still got $20 billion traded in the last 24 hours. So the same amount of money is moving around. And the BTC dominance is at 41.8%. That hasn't slipped any. So let me tell you, Bitcoin's still on top. Even though we're coming in right now with a BTC price of 9000 that's down 9.3%. I mean, what can I say, people? I'm here for the long haul. And that's about all there is to it with me. Uh, Ethereum, they're under $700. Coming in at $690, that's down 8.7%. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff rides on Ethereum. Ethereum has a lot to do with, you know, the ICOs that are on it, the regulation that could potentially be happening with the ICOs could be driving the price downwards. You know, Ethereum hasn't been around along. Ethereum is being attacked by all of these other, you know, smart contract crypto cryptocurrencies that are being developed such as you know like neo and so forth it puts downward pressure on this stuff you know the, this stuff is usually an investment on what the long-term aspect of it's going to be and new cryptocurrencies are coming out every single day you know trying to take funds from the ones that have been here for a little while all right so let me see ripple down to 79 cents that's down 7.6 percent uh we got bitcoin cash under a thousand dollars coming in at 985 bucks that's down 9.1 percent and we got litecoin hey they've been holding out pretty much the best out of everybody right Right now coming in at $174. That's down only 5%. So I mean, hey, our Litecoin holdings are doing pretty good, right? And all right, so we got Steam. Uh, we're about half of what I'd like to be. They're both down. Steam and Steam back dollar are both down 15%. Uh, looking at $2.42 and coming in at $2.48. I heard crypto the other day talking about... Um, the metrics of using the steam back dollar and how far away how far away from the dollar bill it actually is as a way to determine how inflated the altcoins actually are 
Um, I used to actually use that metric a ways back on this show. You guys go back and check it out. I still kind of use it personally. I had stopped using it when, you know, the steam back dollar had gotten way up there around the $15 mark. Cause it just, you know, didn't make sense anymore. But now that we're slowly coming back down to the $2 and 48 cent mark, you know, I liked it at five bucks, but it, it starts to bring this metrics a little bit more back into the spectrum. So, I mean, when you're figuring things out as we all do with cryptocurrency you know you got to make sure that you're not just focusing on one way of looking at the market you have to continuously be using all of them all right so what are we looking at here for news on bitcoin and coffee it's a chilly one this morning here in florida all right so we got a couple exchanges uh, in Japan that have been shut down for about 30 days. Um, the Japanese financial service agency is pretty much saying that they got poor security. So, I mean, I guess they're shutting them down for a month pretty much right before they'd be getting hacked. Because if their security is that bad, like I tell you, these things are honeypots. Hackers are hitting all of them as quick as they possibly can. Because this cryptocurrency is going to be worth so much in the future. And I mean, smart people know that. Uh, so they're going to be shutting down bits, or they shut down as today bitstation and fsho um and they're citing about five more that they're looking at shutting down here if they don't do something about the security in the next month uh you know I, that's kind of good i mean you know we got the they went ahead japan went ahead and you know embrace cryptocurrency and now they're going ahead and trying to put a, some regulation at least on the security part of it and the anti-money laundering laws and all of that that we knew we weren't ever going to get away from but the fact that they're like really strong on the fact that these exchanges need to have good securities and not get hacked which we're constantly seeing we're constantly seeing in cryptocurrencies how these exchanges are getting hacked how people are losing funds how they just say sorry how they're producing a token how they promise to pay us back and now we're looking at situations how like the guy from mount Gox may be putting downward pressure on the market by manipulating it through selling, you know, the cryptocurrencies holdings that he still had from Mt. Gox, you know, these exchanges are not really the best news for cryptocurrencies because they're fixated points that allow somebody to have some kind of control and for the government to try to, you know, strong arm them into what they really want. That's why decentralized exchanges are going to be the biggest thing this year. You know, all right, so let me see. Uh, I also got some news that I had a couple people write me about, and I seen something on Twitter about it, so I thought I'd bring it to you guys' attention. We don't know what's happening over at Cryptopia. I guess some people are definitely having trouble making withdrawals from there. Uh, they're seeing big, huge delays. So uh, I don't really use that exchange. It's not really one of the most trusted, but they do have a lot of those smaller coins that a lot of people like to invest in because there you got a better chance of that 300% gain there, right? All right, so let me see. The last little thing is I wanted to talk to you guys pretty much about, you know, what's happening with Bitcoin and how everyone is, you know, fudding everyone out. If you're invested in Bitcoin and you're holding it right now, you kind of just have to hold strong. You have to already have a plan in place on what you're doing and what you're going to do with cryptocurrency and no matter what happens you need to kind of stick to your plan uh because otherwise you're being swayed by the markets and initially i found that in life when you go ahead and make a preemptive decision with lots of thought and planning that it's usually the right decision you know your first choice is your best choice and it usually stands true with cryptocurrency so i mean if you went out and you bought some bitcoin and you bought some ethereum and ripple and you're holding it you put it in a hardware wallet and you like recently bought it and it was up at fifteen thousand or seventeen thousand or anywhere up there you know where it's higher than it is now and you're thinking oh you're going to cash out and this and that second tier solutions are coming uh, you know, we ran into a situation where for about two years, Bitcoin was held down. Uh, we wanted to go ahead and we wanted to scale the network. We had segregated witness. We kept trying to push it forward and we were held back and the price was suppressed and we couldn't understand, you know, as the users, as the merchants, as the developers, we couldn't understand why the miners didn't want to get on board with the segregated witness. Well, Secretly, we found out that they had some form of an ASIC boost and that it was preventing them from going ahead and adopting this next upgrade that we needed for Bitcoin. Well, all of this is past now. You know, this is ancient history now as far as cryptocurrency is concerned and we're moving forward. Well, we know what the next solution is. We know the second tier solutions are the answers. We're just waiting on development and adoption, which is completely different than an unknown, unknown situation of the miners suppressing the fact that Bitcoin could do better because they're trying to, you know, fatten their pockets with some secret code that they had to be able to make these miners run pretty much against us. Um, 
So since we know that it's just a matter of time, you know, we're just holding out. So does it really matter if the price of Bitcoin is $9,000 today or $7,000 tomorrow when you bought it at $10,000? If, I mean, ultimately in the future, Bitcoin is going to be valued so high that you're just trading Bitcoin with people and you're not even concerned with the dollar value anymore? Got to think big picture, people, as always. So if you like what's going on here on Bitcoin and Coffee, I need you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there because as I keep saying, these numbers are slowly trickling upwards, and that is a plus. Um, as I keep saying, that free help desk service, it's there for you guys. I mean, if you're new to cryptocurrency or even if you've been here for a while, but you just got questions or you want to talk to somebody or, I mean, I've heard people say they like my you know, demeanor and all of these other things. I love to chit chat. Shoot me an email. It's eugeneforest20 at gmail.com. Uh, or just comment below. Or if you're on Steam, comment below there. I'll upvote your post. Uh, if you got something, you know, really to say, I answer people. I talk back. I tell you guys to have a great day and enjoy your cup of coffee with me. Uh, you know, I'm just a normal guy. I'm out here in cryptocurrency. And, you know, some people do in life. Some people watch in life. And I've always been a doer. You know, I get out there and I work with my hands every day. I'm a fixer. I fix stuff. And, you know, the problem a lot of people say with Bitcoin is that a consensus doesn't really happen and that there's nobody behind it. Well, I'm out here supporting Bitcoin. I'm out here trying to provide a free help desk service because I want to see Bitcoin do better because if Bitcoin does better, then my investment does better and I'm willing to work for that. So you guys keep your Bitcoin safe and have a great day.